Okay, we'll get right to it. Um, joining me, joining me today for Cafe A Conversation, a record-breaking audience, uh, Charlie Whitesides uh, from Street French, with over a hundred and. 33,000 followers and 7.3 million total views on YouTube, streetfrench.org has become a leader in helping learners speak conversational French the way it's really spoken. And Charlie, such a pleasure and delight uh, and honor that you're joining today, uh, bienvenue. Salut, thanks for that, um, Jeff. Uh, thank you for having me, it's really nice to be here. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. I have a bachelor's in French and Francophone studies from Cal State Long Beach in California. Study at the Sorbonne. Um, I'm finishing up my master's at Middlebury College in French education. And I've written a couple of books about speaking French and that sort of thing. Um, with our clients, we teach them French through conversation and how to improvise. And uh, we help them with their accent and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, and I've been working with Jeff for, how long has it been now, Jeff? Like three years? I'd like to think it was less than that, but I think it's probably about three years, uh, maybe even longer. And I, I, uh, I will let folks know if they don't know the story, uh, this group, Cafe A Conversation, which is based in Omaha, but we, uh, we do have folks uh, around the United States and a um, few around the, the world. And certainly uh, many of you, I think, are joining us from uh, outside of uh, the United States today. Cafe A Conversation is all the fault of Charlie's. It's, it's uh, Charlie, uh, you were the one who, when I was starting out, um, just a wee lad a few years ago, whatever it was, and, I, <laughs> uh, and, and, and you'd said to me, you'd said, you said, hey, why don't you start a, a conversation group? Yeah, and I because you, you didn't have anyone to practice with, and I just, just right. kind of threw that idea out that you should start a group, and then you actually did, and how many <laughs> members do you have now? We have, uh, I don't know what the last count is on Facebook. Our Facebook group is uh, over 225. Okay. So um, if you're not in the Facebook group, please feel free to find us, Cafe A Conversation, uh, or you can email me. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's a healthy group. And uh, you were doing something similar in L LA for a while when you were? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, that's why it's so important to, to practice French with people. I used to go to a meetup that I found on meetup.com, I would go religiously once a week for like two years. And that's where I really learned to, to put all the stuff I learned in French class to use. Uh, okay, so the main, the main thing we're gonna talk about today is simplifying your French, uh, keeping it très off, as you're always telling me. And yeah. uh, it's, Charlie, it's something truly that has, uh, as a French learner, really, uh, freed me up and liberated me, I think, and, and uh, took away some of the anxiety. So mm. could you just kind of go through, go through that a little bit about economic, economizing and yeah. simplifying a little bit in your, your approach? Yeah, definitely. So um, this is what I go through with most of my clients. They're going from, usually from English, their native language, they're very eloquent and they can say, you know, a lot of things in English, obviously. But going to French, they want to have that same level or, you know, they're trying to translate things word for word or exactly how they would say it in English and they just can't do it. And then a lot of times you can't even translate something exactly how you would say it in English. Um, and so that's one of the first things I work with them or I work on with them is this idea of economizing and how to say more with less. And it's, it sounds counterintuitive, but instead of trying to fill your head with as much French as possible, it's a lot, it's just much more beneficial to master the basics. Um, you know, they're trying to learn all of these complicated expressions when, you know, they can't really string a sentence together or like order a coffee and, and you know, like with relative ease, that sort of thing. Well, I think one, one of the frustrations for me early on was that, you know, it, so when you're learning uh, your native language, you're, you're, you're also, your brain is learning how to function and you're learning about the world. So yeah. you're sort of learning it all at once. But then when you dive in, especially me at an older age, learning French, I already had all these, what I thought were complex, smart thoughts, you know, and mm. I wanted to talk about existentialism and I wanted to have these long mm. drawn out sentences. And that's, mm. I think that's one of the frustrations that, that I had early on. So is that something that you've addressed? I know you've addressed that with me and with some strategizing about maybe telling a story. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, one thing that we were we worked on, you know, in, in our early lessons, like I taught you how to say c'est pas loin, because you want to say something was close, right? Mm -hmm. And I said instead of saying c'est près de, right, which is that's how you say it's close. That if you learn c'est pas loin, which it should be, ce n'est pas loin, right? That's what it should be, but um, we're gonna take that ne off in in conversational French. So now you have both. Now you have it's far and it's not far. So you could just take that like pa off and then like oh c'est loin. And so now you got two phrases out of out of one. That that was a revolutionary idea to me because it it really so first of all yes dropping the na in spoken in spoken French and you you preach that a lot um, it's good to know about it obviously and if you're writing in French you need to know that but that phrase and you said Jeff learn say pas le moins, and uh, you you have everything contained in there <laughs> it's mm. closer it's far yeah yeah très simple <laughs> yeah yeah exactly très simple. But yeah. So anyway, so yeah, c'est pas loin. Um, you know, just that's what I mean by economizing, trying to get the most out of the phrases. So I want to think about as little as I can um, when I'm speaking. You know, like when I have too much going on, is that's when people get lost and like they start to get really stressed out. And um, yeah. So what do you what do you say to someone who, as we mentioned a minute ago, like you might have a complex thought you know, that you, and just a thought and that you would could say in English maybe, but now you want to say it in French. So I would, when I was starting out, I would take this long sentence and I would put it in Google Translate or I tried to figure it out first and I tried to translate it and it was just a, it's a nightmare. So yes. what's a, is there a technique, you know, in trying to do that or telling a story that you might share that would be, of, you know, be of help? Um, I mean, one thing that I ask my clients right away is how good do you want to be, like realistically, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I find that a lot of people don't really need to be like that good. They just want to be able to hold a basic conversation in French or to get around, um, you know, when they come over to France. And then that could change. You could say, oh, I want to be just relatively conversational. And then maybe later you might want to get better. Like that's that's fine, too. And mm -hmm. just this idea of like making the language work for you. Yeah, I mean, and one of the things you, we were talking about recently is how lately there's been there's been there's been kind of a trend on Instagram or other, you know, YouTube even like yeah. ten ways to say thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And is that yeah. something that you talk about that like too many expressions can? Yeah, exactly. I mean, no disrespect to to any YouTube or Instagram account that does that. It's really interesting, but I just find that it's not super helpful for someone who's just starting out. Like, it'll be like 10 ways to say merci when you probably only needed one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. What I find is really important is just comprehension and mm -hmm. understanding French, understanding the general sense of what someone is saying um, and being able to respond simply. And, and, and comprehension comes from listening, um, practicing. Yeah, definitely. We're talk about that a bit. Yeah, definitely. It's just knowing what to look for. Um, and it just comes with experience with the language. But a lot of times it comes from context. There are visual cues, there are mm -hmm. hesitation noises. You can see someone's expressions on their face, their gestures. Um, like when I was in Tokyo, I saw this guy from really far away and he was like, <sighs> like he just made this like really mm -hmm. French. I, I, and I was just like, oh, I know this guy's French. And He's of course French. he was, yeah. <laughs> and so all that means something and could help you when you're understanding French. Um, I had a client who came over to Paris last weekend and he was getting around just fine. He, I worked with him for like a year and he still makes mistakes. His accent's not the best, but he can chat with his Uber driver about sports. He can get around, make reservations at a restaurant and he had a great time. And so that's one, you know, way that he made the language work for him. Like he's not mm -hmm. trying to be the best French speaker ever. He's just, you know, enjoying the process and just doing his best. Can you talk a little bit more about some of those, you know, either the filler sounds or you've taught me a couple things like so that it's I've encountered I've encountered something in, in some French practice groups where, you know, you're so nervous and, mm -hmm. and the other person just wants to like talk because they're trying to figure work it out. Mm -hmm. And you've reminded me to slow down and mm -hmm. to keep it a conversation. And you, you've taught me a couple little things along the way. So when we're practicing in French, 
Um, I'll say, uh, tu vois? Yeah, Trace exactly. Off. Yeah, do you see? Tu vois? And it's yeah. just a way to encourage and include the other person. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, you know, because sometimes when someone's speaking French, they just look so nervous or they look so like upset, like they're just visually having a bad time. <laughs> um, but just when you, you know, when you speak French and you're just telling these little stories, you're like, oh, what you say? You know, just a little something like that. Tu, tu vois? And it just kind of like, just like we do in English, like, oh, you know, you see, and um, it just kind of keeps the flow going. And, and, and talk a little bit about, you know, anticipating, you know, certain things or questions that might come up. I mean, you, you know, in limiting, limiting the overall kinds of things you might talk about, kind of anticipating maybe what the other person oh, might yeah, say yeah, and definitely. practicing that or. Oh yeah, absolutely. So whenever I see my clients, I usually see them once a week. And I'll generally ask them how their week was, right? I'll say something kind of like this, right? I mean, not all of these like at once, but you know, tu as passé une bonne semaine, right? Did you have a good week? Tu as passé un bon weekend? Or like une bonne journée, depending on on um, the context. Yeah, and what tu as fait quoi? And um, yeah, and so whenever they see me, they can just just know that I'm going to ask them that. Or every time they go to um, the Café et Conversation uh, meetup group, they can just expect that someone's probably going to ask them that. Do, do you ask this question often, Jeff, in your group? Wait, you know, yeah, it, 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 yeah you, and you hear a lot, of course, you know, ça va, you know, but, uh, or, you know, yeah. quoi de neuf, or, you know, what's what's new. And, um, and it's it's funny, I'm, I'm more aware of these uh, little pleasantries, I guess. Um, mm -hmm in French than I would be in English. I guess we do them in English. I don't think about it, but I'm pretty hyper aware that when I go to a practice group, yeah. I'm going to ask someone how they are or what, what they've been up to. And yeah. I can assume that they're going to ask me and unless they're just starting out and then, then I might want to share with them what they might ask someone, but mm. it's a good conversation starter, good icebreaker. And you, you, then you already have a couple answers in your back pocket. And that to yeah. me, it's like when I'm driving there, especially when I was first starting out, started the group, I wrote notes and I'd be driving to the meetup and I'm practicing what I'm going to ask for pleasantry and how I'm going to respond. Mm -hmm. So I already had that in my back pocket and it, it, it really took away some of the anxiety. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like if you go to a, a meetup, um, you know, people are generally going to ask the same kinds of things. Or if you mm -hmm. see your friends, even you would probably ask them, what did you get into this week? How was your day? things like that. And then it's only natural that they ask you after you, after they tell you what they were up to, they're going to say, et toi? and then you should already have that plan, right? Because we generally do the same things um, every week and you can just have kind of a generic response, just if you're just starting out. And then I have some clients who want to get so detailed and I have to tell them, you know, I'm not the police. I don't need to know exactly <laughs> what you were, you were up to this week. Just really keeping it general. <laughs> and light you know um, plus, so you, unless is, of course you're being investigated by yeah the police, then you might have to answer yeah unless you're in court yeah it's not that big of a deal <laughs> it, so. it, it it is kind of funny though is it what do you think it is is it anxiety is it is it nerves that that i mean i've done it like i want to like again say all these complicated things or tell way too many details or yeah. you know someone was telling me uh a while back about um they, they built a, a, a birdhouse or something, but they went into great detail in French mm. about what kind of bird it was and how mm. they built it. I don't think maybe I would in English if I knew birds, but I think I might just say I bird, built a birdhouse. Yeah. You know, I don't, I yes. don't know, but, but then you're suddenly like trying to translate what kind of bird it is and yeah. what tools were needed. Yeah. Most people, most people don't care probably, or not that they don't care, but, keep it general would you say yeah, yeah. i mean i guess it, it depends on that person's level and how well they spoke french and then all, also is that an appropriate thing to tell someone <laughs> you know <laughs> just you know um right. who knows but yeah this is like my generic answer that i this, you know i pretty much do the same thing every week j'ai bossé j'ai fait du sport je retrouvé des amis au café that's... And and <laughs> j'ai retrouvé uh, des amis uh, au café is a, a great example because um i i hear other uh, french uh, learners who are starting out and i certainly have struggled with this in the past 
um, you know, talking about meeting up and they're trying to figure out and they get, they get confused with the, the different words for meeting, meeting, meeting up and all that. And then, but there are basic phrases and using Protruve for finding, finding your, each other, you know, and, uh, or using yeah. it reflexively or something. You want yeah, just definitely. touch on that? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So we have the verb um, which is what we learn in school usually, and it means to meet someone for the first time, right? So you can only rencontrer quelqu'un once, right? And then, of course, we can make it um, reflexive, right? Like we, oops, I misspelled that, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, no problem. and then, yeah, so se rencontrer, right? And then we also have retrouver, right? Which means to meet someone that you already know. So that's what I wrote here. J'ai retrouvé des amis. Because they're my friends. So, of course, I, I know them, right? And for me, when I look at this, it's how you know I've been looking at French for too long. I see the verb like retrouver, like to find. So it's kind of like to refine someone. Um, and that's kind of what I was talking about, about how you can look for little things that are like indications of what something might mean. But yeah, retrouver, to meet up with someone that you already know. So when, when you're, uh, you, you say, you often say when you maybe go to a meetup or something to maybe have a little story ready to go. Is oh yeah, a... just like I was saying, like, oh, j'ai bossé, j'ai fait du sport, j'ai retrouvé mm -hmm. des amis au café. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's kind of like the generic answer that I have, you know, if, mm -hmm. if, uh, if I were to go to a meetup. And then I might have another one that I might make for that specific week, like if something mm -hmm. happened. Um, that's kind of like my generic um, ending to to a story. Like after you say something for a while, at the end you just say, "Ah, oh, c'était bien," mm -hmm. and it just, just kind of lets the person know you were done talking. Mm -hmm. um, which is another technique that I really like um, to share with with my clients. Um, just using "se" and an adjective, or I could also say this in the past, like "c'était." And then ça va être would be in the future. So if you just memorize those with like five adjectives, you could see a ton of stuff. Can you give a couple quick examples yeah. for, for both? Yeah, maybe? of course. Some of these you already know, like bien and pas bien, mm -hmm. and then bon and pas bon. So um, bien is like very general, like, oh, that's great. You know, like that's nice, that sort of thing. And then bon is usually attached to a product. Like c'est bon. Uh, like a cake or something. Ah, c'est trop bon. Um, yeah, we actually have a video on YouTube where we explain this. You, yeah, you want to talk about just briefly, and we'll, we'll of course, uh, we can put up links later, but again. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll give you some more. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, uh, YouTube, though, you have many, many wonderful videos yeah. on a lot of these things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But um, something that I tell my clients to work on is a lot is this idea of like, cognance which um it's just a word that's similar to the language that you're learning and the language or it's you know the language that you speak and the language that you're learning and so there are a lot of those between french and english like here would be you know a list right here that of adjectives that you could use with say c'était ou ça va être right so <laughs> difficile like you, you wouldn't even really need to <laughs> to speak french to understand what these mean right like difficile <laughs> Compliqué, cool, sympa, intéressant. And so just with like five adjectives and memorizing like c'est, c'était, ça va être, you can say something, you know, in the present, in the past, or in the, in the future, right? And then you could use this with uh, other techniques, which, you know, I, I would really love to get like deeper into all of these techniques, but we, uh, we have a free e-course at streetfrench.org where I go into this stuff a lot more in detail. But, um, you know, if I was talking to someone, I might say something like, like this, like, you know, just an example of how I would combine those two things, right? Like, oh, je vais bosser, ça va être compliqué. You know, like, I gotta, it depends, it depends on the context. Like, oh, I have to work, it's gonna be complicated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or like, you know, um, or if I'm talking about something that happened in the past, like, oh, c'est difficile. That's um, great, man. Um, yeah, I know, I know we already touched on sort of hesitation noises. Are there any others that, that are, or facial expressions that, I mean, I know you, were, you referred to that earlier when you were in Tokyo, but uh, any others quickly that you can think of that? Um, I mean, breath, maybe for my, uh, 
both yeah both mm -hmm. is kind of like well like, it's not great both but um something that maybe for more advanced um french speakers that i i tell my more advanced clients is that they can use hesitation noises like uh boom like that sort of stuff when they're speaking mm -hmm. to like formulate their phrases in their head and and have their their word groups stay together more like Souvent, je trouve que mes clients parlent comme ça parce qu'ils réfléchissent en même temps. So instead of speaking French like that, you can say, uh, bon, ouais, c'est mieux si on parle un peu plus comme ça. Puis on les pose et puis on réfléchit un peu plus. And you see how like the word groups are, are more together and they, they just sound a lot more natural instead of having it like, you know, like up. The, yeah, exactly. So that's one way, you know, that more advanced French speakers could make their French flow a little bit more and sound more natural. So uh, do you mind uh, just touching on a couple other things? Uh, the, the, the the new form, um, uh -huh. which is taught in a lot of classes, and we have uh, uh, a lot of, again, a lot of French learners here. Uh, things like the, the, the formal part of the language, the new form or asking a question with the inversion um you, you don't hear a lot of those things very often spoken french right oh yeah like um i've been living in paris more. for about six years i don't really hear anyone use new as a subject personally except for like maybe a politician or something it's pretty formal usually we're going to use um, uh, oh that, well in the inversion in um Oh, inversions, right, right, right. So inversions would be like, I wrote something like that, like, uh, oops. Right, so we're inverting the, the subject and the, um, and the verb. And this is really not common in conversational French at all. I remember <laughs> distinctly the last time I heard someone use this. Um, I was in the, the cemetery and it was an older woman and she, she asked me a question and she inverted the, and she, she did an inversion. Usually we're going to say something more like either and I'd say it's about 50-50. It could be either of those. Well, using the Kesca or Eska form or just going for it without, without that? Yeah, yeah, which I misspelled again. Sorry. No, not, not problem. <laughs> oh, yeah, because is definitely correct, but it's more literary. And yeah, it just sounds a bit odd in in conversational French, but yeah, yeah. I think it's one of the I think one of the struggles, you know, at least for you know, folks say in Omaha or any place in the United States where you haven't spent time in in, in a French speaking country, and you're only getting the formal you know formal class, which is can be obviously very helpful and all that, but unless you're immersed in it in hearing how people speak maybe it's a little bit a little bit of a challenge you know so you know to, to kind of get into that more informal way of speaking um and again just for anybody who's just starting out when we were talking about the new form uh on, on, on is the form that generally you would hear instead of instead of new um is there any anything you would recommend for folks to to kind of have sort of an immersion experience wherever they are to kind of get a sense of yeah. how people really speak? Oh, definitely. So um, yeah, something that I would, that I tell all my clients is that you need to practice French with someone. You can't really learn French alone in your bedroom, watching YouTube videos and stuff. It's not really how it works. That's why it's great to see you all here at a Cafe Conversation. Like, um, yeah, that's how, that's how you do it. Um, you know, one way you can meet someone would be on like apps, online, but yeah, there you know there are two apps that I really like, Hello Talk and Tandem. Um, like these, oops, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not the best at Zoom. So anyway, uh, yeah, so they have you're doing Tandem. great. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, we have Tandem and Hello Talk. So they'll um, link you up with a native speaker, a native French speaker who is trying to learn English or any other language that you speak. And it's like a language exchange. I've met some really cool people on Tandem and Hello Talk, actually. Do you think it's more uh, beneficial to be conversing with a native speaker uh, as opposed to someone like, 
is it helpful to talk to someone who as that is at your level or not at your level okay. or does it is so, it all help what do you so think? i think i think with anything in language learning is you have to experiment and you have to find what works best for you personally yeah i mean if you meet someone and they're way better than you they might be bored they might not you might not be good enough to keep up with them but that's why a group like this is great if you have more beginners and they can practice together you know it really depends but maybe you'll meet someone on an app like this and you'll really hit it off and maybe you'll mostly speak english and you'll eventually get better at french you can kind of catch up with them there's just so many different ways um you know so many different variables you 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 told me a story once so you had uh gone to paris and then you come back to the US and then you were in the process of heading back uh, to France. But I think you said when, when you were here, uh, mm -hmm. you would be on the phone with someone at the grocery store and yeah. you were in the US, but you were like trying to describe everything you were yeah. doing in French. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I would just walk around and I guess you don't really need to be immersed in, you know, like live in the country. Um, I would just go like pretty far out of my way to um, to just have as much exposure to French as I could. Like I put my ATM, whenever I went to the ATM, it was in French, my computer was in French, my phone was in French. Um, you know, I went to that French meetup that I was talking about. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you can do an immersion. Like you, you, I, yeah. I, I'm kind of, I'm so obsessed. I've done that where I've switched my phone, my laptop, it screwed my laptop up because I had problems switching <laughs> yeah. it back. And I think I didn't just switch the language. I think uh, this is an old laptop. I think I switched it to, to the country of France. And oh, then it okay. was having trouble. I was having trouble uh, updating it anyway. Yeah. But there are ways to do it with podcasts and music. Do you think you get much benefit from listening to French music? Or um, it's kind of like if you like heard Celine Dion singing in English, you know, would that be the best way to learn English? Maybe not. <laughs> um, I think, um, yeah, podcasts can be good if you find one for that's appropriate for your level. Um, definitely all of that. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you had, like, I had a French pen pal for a while. Um, I wrote to her like every day for, or maybe four or five times a week for a few mm -hmm. years. I, what else? And then I'd go to that meetup that I was talking about. I'd watch a French movie once a week. And I really just kind of, um just just exposing myself to the language as much as i could mm -hmm. so we've got um, some questions coming in is that all right yeah. if we kind of pivot to oh, yeah. yeah yeah so shelly bartek um is asking if uh there are a few phrases that would be good to study before taking a trip to france and i guess that kind of a little bit touches on some things said before about some basic things but can someone just go to france without having actually studied the language and oh yeah you get away with a few phrases or what do you think oh yeah people do it all the time um you don't really need french at all in paris it's you know a lot of people speak english so i have a ton of phrases for you shelly so one of my most you know <laughs> one of the first things i share with my clients is où sont les toilettes so this is something <laughs> you'll probably say a lot let's see what else you can say je vais prendre and that is when you're ordering something oops oops and the toilet, yeah, uh, of course, is plural. Always. Yeah, yeah, it's something right. else. So, um, où sont les toilettes? What? Je vais prendre um, when you're ordering. And people tend to say that maybe a little bit more than uh, je voudrais. Yeah, right. I've, I mean, you could say je voudrais. I don't really hear it ever, but I mean, yeah. Because that's what's taught. <laughs> yeah. Um, je vais prendre. It's kind of like saying I'll have or I'll take the whatever. Or you could even just say un café, un café, si vous plaît. like whatever you want to take or whatever you want to have, you just say that. Mm -hmm. um, there's that. Uh, what else? Like really important though, if you're going to go to France is this idea of like bonjour and au revoir. Actually, I guess we should say it more like merci, au revoir. So in America, I could just go up to someone and start talking to them. Uh, but in France, I have to say bonjour or bonsoir first. Uh, otherwise, it's really rude in French culture. It's like I'm not acknowledging their existence and they'll look at me. Uh, well, what am I, a dog? You know, so you have to say bonjour before, right? So if I was getting someone's attention, I'd say, ah, excusez-moi, excusez-moi, bonjour, est-ce que vous savez? Like, I would, I would say something like that. 
And then even if you have to switch to English, it's already set the tone that you've made this effort. Yeah. So yeah. It, even if I was trying to get someone's attention, I would say like, oh, excuse me, bonjour. Mm -hmm. And you know, generally, um, now, you know, sometimes maybe, uh, yeah, you, you generally want to do this before you, you interact with anyone in France. And then before you leave, you want to say merci au revoir. Otherwise it's really rude. And that's why a lot of people have like problems when they go to France to visit because they didn't know this. And yeah, and then so they say French people were rude, but then you were rude first in their language and in their culture. So yeah. Be because of that, I've actually, I, uh, when I started doing that in France, I, uh, I now do that in the US, not in French, but <laughs> I, do that I, all the time. I will always say hello and thank you and goodbye. Yeah. And sometimes they're like, what, what are you doing? So, uh, yeah. Sue Mayhall was asking about, you know, French watching French TV can help. And someone else mentioned that Netflix certainly has uh, quite a bit of uh, French programming with captions. What do you, what do you think? All right. So I love this question. So this is my personal opinion. Okay. I think it's really difficult to understand French TV or French movies because they rework the sound. You know, sometimes they talk like this for a dramatic effect. Right. And then, so, um, yeah, even sometimes, yeah, it's, it's just not the best I find. What I find to be a lot better or, you know, easier to understand would be vlogs on YouTube or even, you know, yeah, especially if you're, if you're just starting out, I think vlogs can be really good. And I tell my clients to mix their, their interests with French. So if um, I have a lot of clients who are sports fans, so I tell them to watch sports in French. They already know what's going on and now it's just in French. So just a little bit easier to understand. And then it's something that they like, so they're more inclined to actually watch it, um, to actually pay attention. With, with English subtitles, with French subtitles, with no subtitles? Um, French subtitles would be best, yeah. definitely. You can slow yeah. it down? Yeah, yeah, you can slow it down on YouTube. It really depends on the person's level, that sort of thing. Um, uh, Alex Berg is asking about uh, how easy is it to find restrooms? I, I think it's fairly easy to find restrooms outside of Paris yeah I think yeah definitely yeah they're they're out there the restrooms uh, so let's see so Cindy's asking a little bit more it's a great question how you work with clients so if you are uh, uh, hiring Charlie as a tutor oh, by the way we're gonna have a discount uh, code for products but if someone wants to hire you as a tutor um, how does that how does that work Oh yeah, we have all the information at our on our website. Um, you know, if you're interested, we have, you can send us an email at um, info at streetfrench.org. Um, sometimes we have a waiting list, though it depends. But yeah. So uh, what was the question? So yeah, is that? Um, I think Cindy wanted to know more about what I do with my clients. Perhaps? Yeah, yeah. You spend an hour with them, and yeah, usually it's an hour. Um, I. Some of the first questions I ask them is just, what are their goals? What do they look to achieve? And I kind of map out their whole French um, learning journey or, you know, and then, and then of course I accompany them and just figuring out what they want to do and, and what's, if they're stressed, a lot of my clients are really stressed about speaking French. And we talk about that and how they're feeling and why they feel stressed and, and really get to the core of, of what's stopping them from speaking French. Cause some of my clients, they've been speaking French for, or they've been studying. Uh, I had one woman, she was studying for like eight years and she knew all the words, but she couldn't speak. And I asked her, do you even like speaking French? And she said, no, <laughs> So I mean, that's a problem. So that's something that we worked on together. It's like, I helped her find something that she actually enjoyed about speaking French. Cause her, her husband was French and, and she didn't know his side of the family. It was this whole thing, but. And can someone come to you, uh, hire you, or there's a waiting list, or there's another tutor or something? Can can someone work with a tutor from the very beginning of their language learning, or do they need to have some classes? Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we work with complete beginners or more advanced speakers. We also have phonetics lessons where we teach people how to improve their accents, that sort of thing. Uh, Kelly uh, Hanslick is asking if it's uh, difficult to immerse oneself in rural uh, rural France. I don't know how you'll answer this, Charlie, but I, I think it's actually, I personally would find it more helpful because I have spent some time 
in other parts of France in rural areas. And mm -hmm. I find that, 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 that uh, generally people talk a, a little more slowly and because mm -hmm. they're not going to speak English generally as much, mm -hmm. you kind of have to sink or swim. What do you, what do you say to that? Oh yeah, definitely. You don't really have much choice when you're in rural France. Well, not, not that I've spent a whole lot of time in rural France, but um, outside of Paris, people, French people don't really speak English much. So you don't really have a choice, which is great if you're trying to learn French. Parisian French though can be really fast. Really? Don't you think? Or no? I don't know. I've not, that? I've just really not spent that much time outside of Paris. Like you, you, you tell me, Jeff. I think that I, I, I hear, uh, I hear a difference, but yeah, you know, a little bit. I just, or maybe, maybe they're oh. just, uh, is a slower pace in rural France and they, they, they can tell when I don't know what I'm doing and they just slow it down to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Oh, before we go ahead, um, Cindy had a, had a question. Do you greet waiters with bonjour before you, you say mm. je vous Yes. Absolutely. That is exactly what I'm talking about. That you cannot just say, je vais prendre. Like, it's just, it's so rude in French culture. And they might not even serve you. I, you know, they might say, bonjour, like first, you know, and, and make a big thing out of it. It's super important. Also, don't call anyone garçon. No one does that. Um, yeah, I was watching the first season of, or the second season of Emily in Paris, and uh, one of the characters called the waiter garçon. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, no. Yeah. More questions. Anybody have a, another comment or question for Charlie? Kathleen's saying, uh, "Can you make it so simple that you just sound dumb? Uh, does that offend, offend French people? Amuse them?" Oh, that's a great. That's a great question. If it's, I wouldn't think it would offend anybody. I think, especially if they know you're starting out. What do you What do you say to that? um i mean you should hear french people speak english no i'm just kidding but you know like, <laughs> like we're so worried about offending someone no actually french people generally think it's really cool that you're learning because a lot of people come to france and they don't bother to learn the language um you know so you're not gonna offend anyone and i, I think this is something else that i i talk about with my clients a lot is we have these ideas that we just kind of created on our own that we, you know, we've never asked a French person, does this, does, does my accent offend you? Or does it amuse you? We're just assuming that, you know, and um, yeah, and it's it's not true at all, or at least in my experience, that I've, um, you know, most French people generally think it's really cool that you want to learn their language and culture. So a couple other questions coming in here um, from Alexandra. Uh, other tips to simplify when? Uh, oh yeah, I've got a ton. So maybe one other like i have another example so i had a client and she said she wanted to say something like you put yourself in hell i mean she didn't say this to me personally but she was telling a story about this and then i was saying that instead of getting that literal translation which doesn't even exist in french or like you could say this for someone else but you can't really say this about yourself i was telling her to think of it more like this right se faire, se faire mal is to hurt yourself it's, it's more physical so you would say se faire du mal is to um, hurt yourself, but not like physically, right? And then so I gave her this uh, translation. So, tu te fais mal. Again, that's more physical. Or tu te fais du mal, right? And so learning that, instead of the literal translation for you put yourself in hell, um, it's just much more practical and you're going to say that a lot more often. And then you also have like different variations like, ah, je me suis... Mal. Oops. Well, je, je me suis fait mal. So I hurt myself. Yeah, and that's one way you can you can economize a bit. Um, instead of learning like like literal translations, you you want to translate the concept. A few words can get you a long way. I mean, fair is such a common. Yeah, you can say almost you anything know. with fair. Actually. Fair, it's so great. Yeah, I love fair. Uh, mm -hmm. Monsieur uh, Packard asks, uh, so not garçon, but Monsieur, Madame. Uh, mademoiselle oh, yeah same madame okay so we're not gonna say first of all it's pronounced mademoiselle so we're gonna drop that e that's called la chute du mademoiselle right mademoiselle. and yeah and then also when you say monsieur it's like you don't get that r at the end monsieur, monsieur. and then so you're not gonna call anyone mademoiselle unless it's quite obviously a child because it's, it's just a thing you don't, you're gonna call it something either monsieur or madame 
okay but uh yeah monsieur is is really good um and then uh, alba is asking uh in songs a lot of words uh, there are a lot of uh, word uh contractions um yeah yeah it, it's lyrics are different a little bit in french i hear i mean i i do hear sometimes the n used for example in a song um for that negative standard so for those that don't know you put it n and pa around a verb to make it negative but i i will hear n and pa sometimes in a, in a lyric for example but mm -hmm. um any thoughts on what Elba's referring to here? Um, oh yeah, definitely. So um, it should be de l'orage, right? Like de, but it's dropped because it's la chute du e, which is the same thing I was talking about in Mademoiselle. So that e sound in like je me, like um, je me, that sound a lot of times um, we can drop that and it's called la chute du e. And we have a video about that um, on our YouTube channel, but um but yeah that's what that is so and it yeah it is kind of like a, a contraction i think of it as a contraction in english for example like if i say like if i say this phrase right like beaucoup de pain like if i said this fast i'd say beaucoup de, beaucoup de pain right like il y a beaucoup de pain and then i would write this out like bo so i'm dropping that e sound and um, that's a really common thing to do in French conversation. I really think of it as a contraction in English, right? So like I could say I am or I'm, um, both of those are standard English. But if you met someone who only, who never used contractions ever, they just always said, I am, oh, do not do that. We would say that their English was a bit odd or mm -hmm. it, was, it, it wouldn't sound like supernatural. Natural. right? And that's um, what la chute is. And there are like really precise rules as you know, as to when you can do that. But yeah, that's what that. Yeah, I, I almost think of like uh, buku, like I almost think of like that is like at the end, like it got married, it was married to buku, and it's just it's now one word buku. Yeah. You know, um, that's how I think of it. I'm always looking for little tricks in my head to yeah, yeah, remember. Yeah, no, that's great. That's that's the way to do it. It's it's you want to. Uh, something else I've been talking about a lot recently is is learning the pattern of the language instead of like learning like all these little things. It's, it's just learning the pattern of of yeah. And so, um, I mean, I could explain exactly why you do that shoot here if um, anyone's interested. And then, but maybe not. But is it necessary? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, do, do you need to know yeah. why, or can you just do it? And, and it was something else you've talked about uh, before, I believe, is that it's important to understand how you personally learn something and then yeah. apply your, your approach to learning the, the language. You wanna just touch on that a quick second? Oh yeah, definitely. So I, like I said, everyone's different and I try to, to work with my students and tell them, I help them dial in their, you know, their, um, their French learning journey. Like some of them like to do exercises. So I tell them to go get a book with the answer key and, and do exercise. If you like to do that for me personally, I would never do that. And I prefer to just go <laughs> to a cafe with some friends and just chat. Um, and it's, I learned more that way personally, but some people are, are nervous, they have anxiety, so they can't just, you know, walk down the street and, and do something like that. But yeah. It's, it's, speaking of cafe, if someone asked if there are vegan restaurants, there, there, are, there are a fair number of vegan restaurants. I think, yeah, I think, uh, are there vegan vegans in Paris? Yeah. Oh, it's, vegans, it's, sorry. Yeah, there are a lot of those. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> There's, um, yeah, it's becoming more and more uh, tendance. Yeah, I forgot how to say that word in English. Um, this happens sometimes. <laughs> like uh, trendy, I guess. It's, it's become more popular. Yeah. Popular. Uh, Cindy is asking uh, if you have any apps that you would recommend. Um, uh, I think a lot of people, you know, default to to Google, but there are some others that. Um, yeah. Word reference is a good a good. A good thing to have right yeah my favorite would probably be word reference it's not really like a translation app but it's like an online dictionary it's kind of like the 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 google uh or the the wikipedia of languages um i really like the forum on this site if you scroll all the way to the bottom there's a forum where someone asked the question and then a native speaker um but yeah so of course you can use um google what i really like to do is i like to go on tandem or hello talk and find a native speaker. It's super easy. And then um, 
there, there's your like your, your translation you know your person <laughs> that you can ask um whenever you need help with with translating something so, for those who haven't used tandem or hello talk the basic theory is that you team you pair up with someone who wants to learn your native language and and they'll help you with your target language right so you might match up yeah. with someone in belgium who wants to learn english and you trade yeah, exactly like yeah like recently i just had this burning desire to learn italian for some reason and um so i you know i, I found someone on there and then whenever i need help translating something um you know i can just ask her and yeah I, i'm curious with your your italian language uh journey has uh, learning another language uh, now, uh, after you've been teaching French, does it impact how you teach French? Uh, you know, so now you're yeah. seeing it again, kind of freshly from the perspective of a, a learner. And, and does that impacted your teaching at all? Is oh yeah, yeah, so much, so much. I haven't been on the other side in a long time. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really changed the way, you know, I've, I teach French in a lot of ways. I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to change up my techniques. And yeah, it's been fun. Any other uh, suggestions for, uh, you know, just practicing pronunciation? I, I, I remember once you told me uh, a few years ago that, when, uh, you know, when you were st still learning, I guess, and you were, you would walk around Paris practicing R, R, R to get the oh, R yeah. sound. Yeah. Definitely. So I, I did that. I walked around downtown Omaha like a madman. I, I always put my AirPods in, or while well, then it would have been regular plug-in, you know, uh, headphones or whatever. But I always, I always do that when I'm practicing French because I don't want people to think I'm crazier than I am. You know, I'm actually talking to myself. But I walk around just, I would do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's always good. Um, I would really, you know, for pronunciation help, you should watch our video on um, on phonetics um it's really the you know what's going to help your accent the most um which you know and, and just being able to cut up a word into syllables should i get into that a bit I, I, yeah i was going to actually uh, yeah that'd be great that's been super helpful i think for for some people to just look at the word differently and yeah and, and, and french is 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 so vowel right? tell me if i'm wrong but it's mm -hmm. a lot about but, the vowel sounds too and yeah it's it's a syllabic language so um yeah so when you're looking at like a sentence like this right so you're not pronouncing the what's the word you're not pronouncing words anymore you're actually pr pronouncing syllables so it would look like that like cut up into syllables and i misspelled it so oh no no we're good we're good yeah so there are four ways you can do this. I'm going to go through it kind of fast, but if you want to watch this again, it's on it's on YouTube in our phonetics video, the first one, right? So there are four ways you can cut up a word into syllables, right? Um, it's like pa, ri, right? Which is going to be really similar to how you, you can do this in English. So we have the the vowel or the consonant and the vowel, and then we get to the next consonant. That's where we're going to break it. So pa, ri, right? And it's kind of, usually it's going to be a, a consonant and a vowel, consonant and a vowel. That sort of thing, right? Or a word like this, we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to keep those two consonants together because they're the same consonant. So, um, right? And then we have when there are two consonants and they're different, we're going to separate them, right? Like so, oops, so bun, right? So bun. And then when it starts with a vowel, oops. Um, we're going to separate it right away. Ooh. So yeah, the word écrit, it's going to look like that. Écrit, right? So um, maybe someone wants to try and cut up this word. <laughs> and uh, yeah, feel free. <laughs> well, I don't, uh, Savadi, I don't, I don't even know what. Consonneuse, it means chainsaw. Consonneuse? Yeah. <laughs> But um, anyone want to try and cut that? Anybody want to dive in and try to write that out in the chat? Yeah, um, yeah. Sue and Alex, you guys, you guys are pretty close, right? So I'm gonna go like ton, and then so like that. So right, I'm, the, the two constants are different, so I'm gonna separate them, right? Ton, so, and then we have oh yeah yeah, uh, Luis got it right. Yeah, ton so nous. and so oops, we're gonna keep them together. The the last two constants ton so nous. 
right? And you see how it's um, like two constants, we separate them. And then it, it's like the, the constant vowel, constant vowel, constant vowel. Um, yeah, for those syllables. And so you recommend that someone would do this when they're learning a new word or when they're they're just practicing on their own or to kind of mentally go through that when you're speaking? What, what do you well, There's just so many applications for this. Like when I notice that when I speak French or when I read it or anything, I'm just, I do this in my head. I'll just cut the whole sentence up into syllables um, like that. And you see it that but, way in your head. Yeah, you kind of or like it. when I'm speaking it. Yeah, and I, I just, it's really become intuitive. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, we're not pronouncing words anymore. We're pronouncing syllables. Mm -hmm. And so if a word is difficult to pronounce, um, I'll have my client cut them up and, and then pronounce it that way. So mm -hmm. any word that's difficult to pronounce, you could pretty much just cut it up like this and it becomes so much easier. Oh yeah, also Cindy asked another question and she said, well, I wonder if learning a third language helps with learning French or oh, yeah. making it confusing. So if you're a beginner, it's probably not a good idea to learn two languages at the same time. Probably not. If you're um, learning another language. Yeah, like uh, when you get your French to a level where you're comfortable, then an, an, a good way to do it is to use French to learn the next language. Oh. So instead of buying a textbook in English, you would buy it in French to learn the next language you're trying to oh. learn. Um, so is that yeah. how you're learning Italian? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool. So uh, yeah. Alex has a good question. Uh, learning in a conversational manner make it difficult to differentiate be between feminine and masculine. I sometimes think it, it depends on who with whom you're with, but like you may not be able to distinguish the le and la in a with, for example. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Oh, is that is that what you find, Jeff? That sometimes you can't distinguish between le and la? When I was starting out. Yeah. When, yeah. when I was when I was learning, like it, you know, and it and and I can hear it now, but it was difficult i you know when you're just learning it's all coming at you a million miles an hour yeah. but anyway yeah. thoughts oh yeah definitely and then that's kind of going back to what i was talking about about economizing like does it matter if it's a little a lot like i can still you know do i know the word or not it's kind of you know it's, it's just staying in there and staying in the language so a lot of times it's you know i i feel like people are you know my uh, my, my business partner she actually <laughs> says that like make um getting the gender wrong of a word is like the smallest error you can make in French mm. and um yeah and I, I always found that really interesting so don't let that stop you just do your best um but yeah does learning French in a conversational manner make it difficult to know which words are uh masculine or feminine um I don't know I uh for me the reason why I teach French in this conversational manner is because I I think um that's what most people want. Most people learn a language to be able to speak it with someone. But um, we actually, I go over this in our um, Learning French, the way it's really spoken ebook. And you could memorize the endings, but it, it gets to the point where it just kind of looks feminine or like looks masculine. Like if something ends in with like that, if I can hear the consonant, you know, like the word um, chaise, right? I can hear that consonant at the end. I, I know it's feminine generally, right? Yeah, or if there's like an E at the end, a lot of times it's going to be feminine. You just kind of learn to, to know what to look for. Or like any word with like a T-I-O-N, I know that's feminine. Yeah, or, you know, foreign words are generally masculine as well. Like, you know, I don't know, internet. Like, <laughs> like, clearly it's not a French word. <laughs> you know, so I know that's that's masculine. So it's just little things to, to go over. I know we had a post about that. On Instagram as well. Um, I could post that in the stories if if you all want um, later, and you can check that out again. Yeah. Uh, what slang words are used most often in regular conversation? Well, I guess it depends on a person's age group and that sort of thing. Um, how old am I now? I'm 33. So let's see. What are some things that I say often? Um, and something that you at 33 might say might not be something that a guy like me necessarily would say right How, probably not you know like i say <laughs> mech and muff a lot or like i might say nana so uh mech means dude and muff means like a chick it's another way to say uh you know a woman nana as well another way to say um woman and muff is very long it's it, it, a lot of words are flipped around and syllables are switched around in, in yeah, yeah exactly so, so muff is uh very long. 
Um, so it's when you invert part of the word. And this one, the, the word is, is completely inverted. But yeah, that's called valon, which is, um, it's actually the word l'envers, backwards. So you're taking the word um, backwards and you're saying it backwards. And this is a type of slang in French. So it's funny when people, or not funny, maybe it's a bit sad. When people spend years learning French and they come over here and people are literally speaking backwards. Not to let that freak you out. You, you're not going to go to, generally go to a cafe and they're not going to be asking you what you want in the backwards. Yeah, like sometimes I, I speak to my friends and they'll they'll say something like, oh, they'll say like, oh, oops, I misspelled that, but it's supposed to be wham. wham, right? And um, yeah, if you, know, you know what that means? Chez Yeah, exactly. So they'll be speaking to me like that and I won't understand and I'll just flip the word and say, oh, okay, cool. And like, <laughs> and it, yeah, it just changes so much. But yeah, so let's see. So yeah, those are some that I say a lot. Jeff, maybe someone, you know, maybe you might say on cheap instead. Cheap like for a guy. A guy. Yeah. 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 Um, some words that I personally say a lot, like chelou. This is the valon of louche, which means sketchy or weird, bizarre, something like that. Um, I really I like might say that. <laughs> yeah, I really like the word roulou as well. Roulou. So Hulu is the uh, valon of lourd, and it means um, like uh, like if I say like oh il est Hulu, it's kind of like saying like oh this guy sucks, like um, <laughs> uh, or like another one would be uh, chiant. C'est chiant. This means mm, well, okay, it's quite vulgar, but but um, you know it's, it's super French, uh, <laughs> so it means um, like annoying. Or something and, and, like that. And you would say this instead of uh, on, your, on your way? Yeah, so I never really heard the word um, on you. Oops, you. Um, on you. Personally, I don't really hear this word a lot. Like, I wouldn't say, oh, c'est on you. It's, it's totally fine, but I would say, ah, oh, c'est chiant. Means like it's annoying. Um, yeah, there are different ways you can use that. But that, that word's really important, I, I find. There, <laughs> there's, there's a prominent pop singer, Strome. Stromae, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stromae, and it's my oh, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, his name is uh, Stromae, and then Stromae. it comes from, like, Maestro, I guess, and then he just, like, switched that. So, yeah, Verlon as well. Charlie, we'll, we'll catch you loose, buddy. Thank you so, so much for doing this. Oh, thank you for having me. It was, uh, it was a real pleasure. It was nice talking to all of you. If anybody has questions, feel free to reach out to one of us, and we'll see if we can... Get those answered. Maybe we'll have to have you back one of these days. We'll, we'll have to get you to Omaha one of these times. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to. Yeah. Um, if you have any other questions, you could just send us a DM on Instagram um, at Street French, at Street underscore French. Yeah. But thanks again, Jeff. Thank you, everyone, for. Merci. For Au revoir. Merci. Science editor Steve Newman reports on one person already using the brand new system.